the poem Negus depicts the struggle against the colonial language, literature and culture. One finds that the poet is actually shouting in the poem. The shouting is a kind of revolt against the influence of colonialism in the minds of Africans. Though the colonial powers have liberated Africa, yet they rule the thinking of Africans psychologically. Thus, in spite of being free, the people of Africa are distracted as their culture has been lost due to colonialism. The poet believes that in order to negate English, they will have to affirm it first. Hence, in his works, only words are of English language. The structure and form are that of Africa. The poem has developing sentences. The words used in the poem are quite easy and commonly spoken which can be understood by every person belonging to X communities. The poem Negus like any other poem of Kamavu Brathwaite, is meant to be sung and not to be read in order to get the meaning. Hence, the poem forms a part of orature or oral literature which is native to African culture. Brathwaite writes such a poem to defend the orature of Africa over the written literature of colonialists. Throughout the poem, we find a plea for bringing back the orature which has been lost due to the introduction of colonial education. The poem is divided into two parts. In the first part, the poet stresses on the fact that just being physically free from colonial powers is not enough as they want psychological freedom as well. In the second part, the poet revolts against the colonial and demands his language so that he may create a world of his own. Part 1 The poet says that it is not enough to be physically free from the colonialism and from the rule of colonial powers. He wonders where is the language that was their own. This is a kind of sigh that is made on the loss of their language which was their identity and culture. He again says that it is not enough to overcome the challenges of the physical life that is just recovering from the physical diseases like malaria or escaping from disasters or overcoming the fear of invasions or droughts or fire is not enough. It is not enough to go to work by ringing bicycle bell as materialism of Japan and the technical achievements are immaterial as they take one away from reality virtually. It is not enough to cut them off from their myths, gods, past, history, etc. And it is not enough to pay to Christ, the God of colonialists, by making a series of knocking sounds on the telephone. Part 2. The poet moves to first person I. He says that he must be given words, his native language, so that he may be able to explain his name to trees, that is, he must be given that language of Africa to be close to nature and far from materialism. He wants to heal his future from the wounds given by colonialists to their culture and language. He wants words so that he may be able to reclaim his past and bring it into existence which was suppressed by the colonialists. Through this language, he will create the world, the environment, the heaven, the gods, the oceans and the land. Thus, he wants to recreate the traditional world of the past which was destructed by colonialists. The poet again says that it is not enough to be semi-colony, that is, physically free but not mentally, nor it is not enough to remain silent. He demands freedom wholly, both physically and mentally. He wants words through which he would blind the god of colonialists and bring his own god instead.